Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. You'll hear from players, coaches, broadcasters, and writers that cover the NFL on a daily basis. The New Orleans Saints podcast starts right now. Here's your host, Aaron Summers. Welcome to the New Orleans Saints podcast. I'm Aaron Summers. The Saints had their second practice back in New Orleans on Wednesday after traveling from the West Coast right after that game Sunday against the Chargers. They'll have a practice on Thursday, Friday, and Friday will be at the Caesars Superdome as they prepare for their last preseason game this Sunday against the Houston Texans. That will be a Sunday night game and you can watch it on national TV on Fox. We saw the return of linebacker Demario Davis, guard Andrus Pete, Cesar Ruiz yesterday. They again practiced today. Also saw defensive end Nico Lalos back at practice. He was absent yesterday with a groin. Sounds like Ryan Conley, the other another linebacker, is going to be out for quite some time. Dennis Allen said that was a fairly significant knee injury that he sustained. We're still watching to see the return of some of the wide receivers. However, always good news when Marshawn Lattimore is back on the field, the cornerback and offensive lineman Calvin Throckmorton, both participating in individual drills today at practice. Brian Breezy left practice with the, he got poked in the eye. We'll get him evaluated. A.T. Perry missed practice with an illness. And uh, Calvin Throckmorton and Marshawn Lattimore both um, came out here, got through individual, and then we pulled them out. So, uh, again, I don't think either one of those are only any of that's real significant, but uh, that's where we're at. Wednesday also saw the return of tight end Jimmy Graham, who experienced a medical episode while in L.A. over the weekend. It's really good to see him back on the field, and he looked great. He was making a ton of catches, running all over the place. He didn't quite dunk over the crossbar. It's more of a layup, but at least he was out there having fun. Yeah, he had a good day today, um, so it was good to see. Um, so, yeah, it was a good day for Jimmy. The Saints added a little different wrinkle to practice today as they pumped in crowd noise, blasted the music, working on some of their communication in game-like environments. I mean, we had to go on silent count offensively, um, which we have to be better at. Um, And then also, you know, defensively, you're going to have to communicate uh, in the crowd noise. And and look, the the biggest thing is we got to be able to operate those situations and not beat ourselves. So um, there's some things that obviously we got to get cleaned up, but We'll continue to work some of that. After practice, the team huddled up and head coach Dennis Allen told them how important those moments are, especially if they play defense the way that they expect to and do as well as they are planning, then it is going to get extremely loud in the Superdome and it's going to be extremely important for them to all be on the same page. For today's podcast, we're bringing in a guest, probably doesn't need much introduction, Super Bowl champion offensive lineman Jermon Bushrod. He's been in town over training camp watching some of the practice and helping out with some of the local coverage. John Shazer joins me now as we welcome Jermon Bushrod. Jermon, thank you so much for joining us on the New Orleans Saints podcast. Appreciate you taking the time. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, and I always appreciate y'all uh, making time for me. So thank you. You've been checking out the Saints over the first couple of weeks of training camp, doing some work on some post-game shows here with Fox 8. What are your mm-hmm. initial thoughts on the team so far? Uh, I like the I like the direction that the team's going. Um, obviously, when you can have a new quarterback, uh, somebody with um, the success that Derek Carr has had in his career so far, and and I really think it's a great fit um, for him, just who he is as a player, but who he is as a person as well. I think New Orleans is a great fit, and I think this is a city and a region that will really get behind him. But uh, you know, when you sit back and you look at the depth chart, you look at the roster, you got to really feel good about this team in the NFC South. Um, you know me, if you if anybody caught anything that I said on Fox 8, I always say, uh, you know, it always starts on the front lines. And I feel like we're making strides. Uh, I think we're a little bit further along on the defensive line side. But uh, I feel like our offensive line is going to be coming along well as these guys start to get healthy kind of going into the first week of the season. Yeah. Do you think that's kind of the biggest issue on the offensive line is just the health there? Yeah, I think honestly for this team in general is the health. but. Uh, I believe that offensive line up front has to be as healthy as they can be. Uh, They have to be as cohesive and they have to be available. And um, the more and more reps that these guys can get together, uh, the better I think this unit will be. Uh, But the the fortunate thing is that if we can get 
Penny, Pete, McCord, Ruiz, and and and, and Ramchek out there week one have these guys healthy, and you have you know an individual like James Hurst who can back up honestly four out of those five positions, and then you have you know Big Throck Morton out there and, and Storm Norton and. Uh, you know, I, I think these are – I don't know about if these two guys are going to make the active, but Throck has played a lot of football uh, in, you know, with the Saints, and, and Storm has had some uh, success outside of uh, this organization too. So, you know, really moving forward, that's the – you know, that's the big position that I'm always going to keep my eye on, but that's the one that's really going to get this team moving in the right direction. You mentioned Trevor Penning. What have you liked about him – He's still kind of working through the experience because he wasn't able to get as many reps last season. Yeah, again, availability, right? Being able to to be out there. And then the more you're able to be out there, um, the more comfortable or the more confident you'll be. And I think that's important for a young player to get reps upon reps upon reps. And then they can kind of start to feel what's right. Uh, you can see what field you know, you can see what's right. Um you know, so I think repetition is going to be key. And uh, for a player like him who has really a high upside and he plays nasty, you know, you want that in your offensive line, uh, in your offensive lineman uh, particularly. But what he's able to do in the run game is special. Now, he, you know, I believe that his pass protection is going to continue to be a work in progress. But I think he has a really good uh, coaches and teachers in that room that's going to help him. Uh, you know, it, it's not about taking this huge jump, but it's right you know, progressively getting better. And I think that's what he's going to do. Well, Bush, um, first off, happy belated birthday. Um, I Thank think you. I'm like, he's like <laughs> it's all good. It's a thought that can, I appreciate you. <laughs> um, but specifically being the left tackle, what, what advice would you, I guess, specifically give Trevor Penning technique wise in terms of improvement here? Um, as, as far as Penning, I mean, look, look at his makeup, right, John, like he's six, seven, He's 340 pounds. Um, he's a guy that you're not really going to overpower, you know, him. So I think he needs to use his strengths to his uh, to his best interest, right? Because you looked at uh, – I look at – I think all players are different, right, and what they're able to do. You know, I wasn't 340. I was 320, 325, but uh, I hated getting a bull rush. Like, I, it was something I despised. Like, it would keep me up at night if I knew I was facing a power rushing, right? So I was able to use my quicks and – and to get on guys and to punch guys, right? And a guy like Penning, you know, he he can he has a good strong anchor, obviously in the way that he finishes and the type of player that he is. But if he's able to just slow the game down a little bit more and and continue to hone in on that technique, take that technique serious because that's what's really going to have him, uh, you know, it's really going to catapult him into having a you know a nice uh, a nice long and sustained uh, career is really honing in on that technique, his hands. Uh, his strike, where he's able to strike, and just how he's able to uh, brace as, as big of a player as he is. So really slowing the game down, figuring out what works for you, you know, figuring out this is what I can do. Now, sometimes I, I can struggle with doing this, this, and this, but this is how I can make up for it. And I think each individual player um, is different, and some guys just can do it all. Saints had a couple couple of um, joint practices against the Chargers that really were kind of the de facto preseason game. They won't have those joint practices against the Texans. Do you feel like that will kind of change what happens on the field on Sunday? Because, you know, some of these guys, if they don't play in that game, they will not have played since the first preseason game. Yeah, I think it's important that, you know, some of those younger guys continue to get reps. And I think that the coaching staff are going to make sure that they are confident in the players that they are putting out there. Um, you know, obviously for week one before this third preseason game too, you know, I think, you really kind of have to earn the right to not play in some of these games, right? And the way you earn that is by, you know, uh, what you're able to do in this, you know, in your career. Like, you got to be able to uh, have some skin in the game, right? Have a few years of being able to show that this is what I can do when I get on the field. Like, you have to earn that, right? You A few years of, of starting and playing, then you don't have to play in the third preseason game because – we know what you can do as a player, you know, and, and your value is being out there for the regular season. But when I think you have some of these younger guys who are still continuing to hone in on their technique and figuring out what works best for them, um, I, I think it's key that those guys get out there and get at least a couple of series. Uh, one, it helps boost their confidence, but then you get that real live game feel that you don't get in practice, right? You have practice, you can have a joint practice, but 
Um, the competition that you're going to get when it's live is just a little bit more different than that practice setting. So, you know, if you got younger guys like Penning and, and, and guys who are still competing uh, to figure out, you know, how they can uh, add value to this team, you know, I feel like, you know, the coaching staff will put them out there if they feel like it's needed. Hey, with Coach Dennis Allen, is it noticeable from afar that how he's, I guess, kind of settled in, how he seems more confident? I mean, I think it's easier to tell up, up close, but do you notice that from from a bit of a distance? Uh, John, I, I think that would be a little bit of a, a harder um, question for me to answer just because I feel like I'm not in there day to day, but just how he carries himself on the sideline, I feel like it's a lot. I feel like it's a lot different. I mean, you've seen him get a little fired up you know, in this past game a couple of times, kind of getting on guys, listen, that's, you know, I needed that. When I was a young player, you, you got to deal with different players in a different way, and you got to be able to get the most out of each individual player in your team. So, you know, DA has been in this spot before. Um, he's been in this spot before, and, you know, he's lived and he's learned. And, you know, being that first head coach outside of the Sean Payton era, that's probably, you know, that's not that's not easy, you know, because everybody loves to play the, the comparison game, right? But DA is just going to continue to be who he is, his coaching style, his philosophy moving forward. And um, he, I think he's, you know, starting to put his own spin on things and starting to get a little bit more comfortable as well. So I see it, but I could I can't give you as, as confident of an answer as I want to. But from afar, as somebody who knows, you know, D.A. has been around him for a while. I feel like he's, you know, taking a different turn for sure. You mentioned the trenches. You mentioned the defensive line. How how have you seen that line progress, especially uh, with the with the significant turnover they had on that line? Because they let a lot of guys out of the building who who played in that defense for a couple of years. Hey, I, I love the, the the new acquisitions that we have. Right. Uh, you know. What those last two guys were able to do for us, Shad Tuttle and David Onyemata, you know, those guys are going their separate ways. But, you know, when you look at the, the caliber of player that you brought in with Nation Shepard and Colin Saunders, uh, I really like their skill set, right? I like what they're able to do. Uh, I think Todd Grantham has got himself a good group. And I really feel like he's, you know, he's helping, he's enabling these guys to figure out the best way that they can get their job done, right? They're not preaching now, you know, hands, extension, eyes in the gap, right? They're, they're, they're preaching from my understanding, just listening, you know, to all the press conferences and seeing how they're playing, getting off the ball, right? Getting into those gaps, getting into the backfield, right? Um, and, and I believe that that plays a lot more into some of these guys' skill set that we have brought in. Um, I look at a guy like Roach who's flashed, right? He's flashed during, during uh, training camp practices from listening and, and, and having, you know, the different clips I'm able to see and being able to be out there before the first preseason game. But then you got some of these younger guys that's kind of coming into their own. Peyton Turner said it, uh, you know, Grantham's kind of, you know, giving them some of that confidence or, or, or helping them bring that confidence up out of them. So, you know, when you have a starting four that we're projected to have and then you have guys that are coming off the bench, uh, your reserves, right, to keep our guys fresh. You got Peyton Turner, who, man, what a, what a great play. Sack fumble he had last week. Uh, the first game he was able to counter and hit that spin back in to smash the quarterback. I mean, like, that's what you want to see out of your first round pick. But this guy is a reserve, right? So he's going to be able to come in, give Granderson, give Cam Jordan a break. I'm loving, uh, you know, what Roach has been able to do, right? Then you got big Brian Garcia and his skill set and his growth. Um, I, I just like the direction that these guys are going in. And, and, you know, just based off what I've been reading and seeing, Tano Passio is playing better as well. So, uh, you you got eight guys right now that we just talked about that one can either start in this league for you, but they're going to end up being reserves and they'll be able, be able to create a rotation. You're going to be able to keep guys fresh. And, you know, it all starts there. You know, I believe it all starts there on each side of the ball, what you're able to do up front. You know, you played in this offense when it reached some of its highest peaks of efficiency. Um, how high a ceiling does it have if, if and I know it's a, a significant if, but if a Michael Thomas is healthy? Yeah, I, I believe, you know, Mike is, is continuing to be a work in progress, but, you know, he's progressing up and you got to love that, right? Like this guy has played, you know, what, under 15 games in the last three years, uh, you know, very up and down. Uh, you know, people think he's just going to roll out of here and, and, and be his old self. It, unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. He's three years older. You know, he's had to deal with some things mentally, physically and emotionally just as a player and a competitor. You know, so he's continuing to work his way back. Is he going to be your number one receiver starting out? 
probably not bright, but he can be someone who still a vicious route runner can still uh, be open, can make the contested catch. Like he's tough, man. And then when you got guys like Olave who can do it all, he can burn you down the field, right? He can run precise routes. And then um, you got Shahid, right? Who can really stretch the field. He kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, a Meacham or a Denver Henderson back in the day. You want a guy who's going to, you know, who's going to be a threat down the field. You got a guy like Olave who can do it all. Mike Thomas uh, can can do everything you need him to do. He can make the tough catches. And then you got these, this, this wide receiver four and five spot where there's a lot of question marks right now. You know, you thought going into camp, I mean, it's, it's, it's Trey Quan's uh, position and obviously what he's been able to do, he's an experienced, you know, he's an experienced vet, but you got guys like uh, Kirkwood, you got um, Shaq Davis, you got AT pair. I mean, he's, it's, this is a big, like, I, I love our receiving group. You got to love that. I think Derek Carr is excited as well. And we didn't even mention Jawan Johnson, and Jimmy Graham and, and, and Alvin Kamara. So like, uh, the thing that was encouraging about the first game, John, is just uh, Carr had one drive, right? Twelve plays. He spread it around to four different people, and, and Kirkwood caught the game. You know, caught caught the first touchdown from him. So, you know, I believe this is a guy that's going to utilize his weapons. He's smart. He's accurate. Um, he's really gaining the respect of his players and organization. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm just excited to see how it all comes together. Carr definitely seems like he's got a lot of options and he's going to try to utilize all of them. It's going to be tough for a defense looking at the NFC South. You kind of alluded to it. It's not the strongest division out there. So how do you think the saints are going to fare within the division? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm biased. We're going to the Super Bowl <laughs> anyway, you know? So like, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to tell you my thoughts year in and year out. I don't, I don't care what the team looks like, but um you know, just looking at the overall makeup of the team and the quarterback position, we have the best quarterback in, in our division. Um, I believe, you know, I believe we have all the tools and we're, we're going to, I think we're going to win the NFC South. I believe we're going to make the playoffs. And, and, and if this, again, if this team, the name of the game for this team is health, are, are these guys available? Are our key guys available? Are our backups able to come in and step in when needed? Uh, I think it's about availability. Uh, I think we got gr- I think we got really good leadership, right, on the defensive side of the ball and the offensive side of the ball now with this new quarterback and the and these guys play hard. I mean, I love listening to stories of of Michael Thomas just really taking the young receivers under his wing and, and trying to help them, you know, be the best pros that they can be, right? Um those are those are the types of uh players, those are the types of leaders that you need, you know, on your team and you know what you got out of DeMario. Um I can't wait to have, you know, he's back healthy and uh, you just got, I don't know. I, I just look at the makeup of our team and I think we can do some damage, but I also think that we got to take it week by week. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm excited about it, but yeah, NFC South Saints number one. I think so. Thanks. <laughs> and speaking of vets, how cool is it to look out on the field on a sideline and see coach Evans out there? No, it's great to see him out there. It was great to catch up with him. Um, really on the field, talk ball, but then I got a chance to see him off the field as well. And, um, you know, just got to catch up with him. It was, it was his birthday, what, yesterday as well. So I got a chance to, you know, see him for all of that. We we went out and grabbed something to eat. We uh, just caught up, you know, talked about families. But, you know, Jari is a smart player. He was a uh, he was a great player for this organization, uh, future Hall of Famer at some point. And um, he's a good teacher, you know, and, and he knows the game of football. He knows how to play offensive line at a high level. So they really got uh, – they got a good teacher. They got somebody who cares, but they have somebody who knows the game, who knows how to play it, who knows how to uh, dissect defenses and figure out what works against certain players. So I think Jari is a great addition. And it's funny because he's with Marone, who was his first coach back in 06, you know, who was also my first offensive line coach in 07. So um, there's some familiarity there. So it's not like he's walking into a room with a guy he doesn't know, who doesn't know him, who doesn't know his history, right? There's a lot of history between these two guys. So uh, I think it's a good fit. I know the answer, and I know there's a bias, but Jari was eligible for the for the Hall of Fame like, first time last year, didn't make it in. Mm-hmm. Eligible again this year. Does he, does he belong in the Hall of Fame? Absolutely. I, I absolutely think he belongs in there. Just, he has the accolades. He has the Super Bowl. Um, he's got multiple Pro Bowls. He has multiple All Pros. Um, twelve year career. Um, I, I definitely think he belongs to being there. Just his makeup on the field and, and, and how he was recognized off of it. Um, at some point, he's going to get in. You know, listen, it's it's always harder 
for the for the big guys, especially the offensive linemen. You know, there's no glitz and glamour and all that good stuff. But, uh, you know, his resume speaks for itself, and, and he'll end up there one day for sure. You mentioned seeing Coach Marone out there, kind of a blast from the past for you, I'm sure, to see him back out there again. What do you remember from your training camp days? Is it something you liked or or not? Because, I mean, I have mixed feelings, mainly because of the weather. <laughs> Listen, uh, I, you, know, I, you know, my first couple of training camps, and Jari can attest to this, and Coach Marone can attest to this, was in Jackson, Mississippi. So I've, I've, I've honestly probably, like, tried to get that memory out of my head a little bit. But um, <laughs> because it was brutal. You know, we didn't have the cold – you know, we didn't have the cold tents or the cold lockers and all those things. And all I remember is, you know, Marone was – he was tough, man. He was tough. But he was a guy who played in the league for a year or two, right? He was a guy who – um knew how to play the position, you know, he's been, he, he's been, uh, in, you know, in the places that we wanted to be. Right. So he, you know, when it comes to football and about being a professional and working and putting the work in, I mean, that was him, that was him to his core, you know, and he was heavy on technique. Right. So I think he's the right person, you know, especially for some of these young guys and, 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 uh, and for some of these uh, players that want to take really that leap, right? You got guys like Caesar, Andres, and, and, and obviously Pennon's just starting out, but these guys can take the next step in their game, right? And, all, and I also think that's also about the the leadership and the coaching and the guidance that you have uh, within your room. But, um, you know, D Doug was great for my career. Uh, and it's always good to kind of just catch up with and see him and just see him back in this light and back with this organization. I think it's really good and, 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 and a positive thing for these young players we have. As the end of training camp nears, there's a last preseason game. Obviously, there's going to be some players that aren't going to make the team. How did you handle that as maybe a veteran player or somebody that you knew your spot was good? You know, just kind of talking to some of the guys around. And how difficult was that? Um, for me, it was – I'm not going to say it wasn't stressful. I wasn't going to say, you know, I didn't sit back and play the numbers game, looking at the depth chart, looking at the, looking at the overall roster. Um, you know, but when I was a young player, you know, I would try to listen to the people who come before me and then just really understanding that I have to be able to control my controllables, right? Control what I do every day, my attitude, my um, my energy, my focus, my preparation, um, figuring out how I can be at my best. And then I have to be happy with with what I do on the field, right? I have to be happy with how much studying I'm doing. I have to be happy with the extracurriculars. I have to be happy with how I'm playing, um, you know, throughout practice. Taking practice just as serious as a game, that's important um, for, you know, for you as an individual, for these young players, and then understanding that not only are you auditioning, you know, for the Saints, you want to make this team, right? But this is a pretty nice roster. We have some, not everybody's going to be able to make it. So there's 31 other teams that might value your services and you might have an opportunity somewhere else. You know, New Orleans is a great place to be uh, a great city to play for um, great locker room, great coaching staff. Right. Uh, I, I love our fan base, but um, you know, sometimes New Orleans just isn't for you at all, or it's not for you right now. And um, as a player, as a young player, you got to, really just control what you can control, go out there, put your best foot forward. And, um, all, you know, good things will happen if you are, uh, if, if you approach things the right way and, and you give that effort that you know you can. You've been on these post-game shows for Fox 8. What else do you have coming up during the season now that you're kind of on the media side of things? Well, you know, that was a really cool opportunity that, um, that I was able to, you know, get into doing the pregame, the halftime and the postgame show with those guys for the last couple of years has been a really neat uh, thing for me. Um, and it's so funny how I got that opportunity. It was, it was in the most uh, Louisiana or New Orleans way possible. It was at a crawfish board, right? So, like, uh, the media thing is really nice. It, it really keeps me connected uh, and around the team. Um, but I'm heavy in my kid's life. I'm, I'm coaching – Football. I'm coaching basketball. I, you know, run my foundation, um, doing offensive line camp. So I'm doing various things to stay busy. But it's it's funny because it's always a lot of things that's around sports, teaching, coaching, and, and and helping you know kids just be a little bit better. And uh, you know that's important for me in my life. And you know, being able to stay connected with Saints football is uh, 
definitely makes me uh, makes me happy. Well, Jaron, I, I really appreciate the time and the insight. Thank you so much. Boy, I appreciate y'all having me on. Hey, thank you, Bush. Absolutely. Appreciate Jermon joining us on the podcast today. And of course, we will catch up with him later in the season. He said he's going to be around for a couple games. Definitely will be here for the home opener against the Tennessee Titans. And then later in December when they honor the Saints legends. Lots coming up over the next week. We have a couple more practices. The final preseason game on Friday's episode of the Saints podcast. We will preview the Houston Texans. Until then, stay tuned to NewOrleansaints.com for everything you need to know about your New Orleans Saints. Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Saints podcast. Join us three times per week on NewOrleansaints.com, the Saints mobile app, or you can download the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Saints podcast.